What's up? What's happening? What's popping? What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another great episode of Simone with the Spizzards. I'm Simone, bringing you guys daily sports talk. So if you're new here, if you're old here, you haven't already subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you start what you're doing. Make sure you leave a comment. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you keep rocking with me. Also, make sure you check out the links down below. The first link is to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel that you love so much. The second link is to Shop the official small of the sports merch collection. Get you the classic tee, wavy tee, or the brand new Jalen Maker Hurts Ooh, tee. And the last link is subscribe to our podcast, Tough Calls with Me and Dylan. Some of your favorite sports analysts, reporters, former current athletes. Chop it up with us on the pod. Guys, new Sixers were born last night. New Sixers were born last night. And guys, I really wanted to do a, a video last night. But I fell asleep. I couldn't do the video. I fell asleep at like 11 because, guys, I've been so tired. Like, I told y'all in my last video, like, I'm going to be at work a lot. And I just did not have the energy. I just couldn't. But I'm here now. I'm back, baby. Where the love, where the love at? Let's get into these new Sixers because new Sixers were born last night. And it's always a special night. So with the number 28th overall pick in the NBA draft, on Thursday, the Sixers selected Jaden Springer, a combo guard from Tennessee. He was a freshman with the Tennessee Volunteers. He's a fresh 18-year-old with a high ceiling and a lot of, he's shown a lot, but he still has a lot of room to grow. Of course, the boy is only 18. But guys, first of all, first reaction, Jaden Springer. Of course, my mind went right to, you know, Jerry Springer. Am I childish or did anybody else? mind goes when I think Jaden Springer I just think J, uh, Jerry Springer but also last night was intriguing we had three picks we're gonna get it all to them but first I wanted to say you know a lot of the Lakers made a big trade the Lakers made a big trade the Lakers made a big trade the Lakers are getting Russell Westbrook they traded away Kuzma Montrez Harrell KCP and some picks to get Russ so it's going to be James, Russ, A.D., sheesh, baby. I just want to know, because that was the headline yesterday. It wasn't the draft. It was that block, block blockbuster trade. So what do y'all, obviously that means Bradley Beal is going to get moved. So does that mean the Sixers are getting Bradley Beal? But is Bradley Beal enough? We're going to get into that later. Right now we're, we get, we're talking about the draft. So guys, Jaden Springer, let's talk about his scouting report because Jaden Springer last season last draft you know we had a big night at draft night we we're making a lot of moves a lot of trades on draft night that didn't happen this night so like I said he is a combo guard he can play point guard or shooting guard his pro comparison is DeAnthony Melton he's 6'4 18 years old the scouting report says he plays on and off the ball with strength to drive through contact he has great passing IQ for a secondary playmaker. His spot-up shooting is good, and he has strong defensive tools. The biggest thing I kept hearing about him is his defense. They kept saying his defense is amazing, and that is huge, especially since we're hmm, considering tra trading away one defensive point guard. That is Ben Simmons. Could Jaden Springer been kind of our prep um, in depth? behind a Ben Simmons trade, depth off the bench when it comes to defending the backcourt. So to continue on, it says, in his lone season at Tennessee, he made his mark averaging 12 and a half points, almost three assists, and a steal in 25 games. He had 15 starts. So I like that. He's averaging a steal a game. I really like that because like I said, if we're trading Ben Simmons, we need another handsy defender coming in. And his perimeter shooting is amazing. He's shooting 43.5% from the three. You know, the college three and the NBA three is a little different. But the fact that he's shooting 43.5, if, if he can shoot 39% um, starting out with us, that would be amazing because definitely, we definitely need more people that can spread the floor, especially if Danny Green doesn't come back. So he helped the volunteers to win a men, the NCAA men's basketball tournament. He helped the, lead them to the tournament. They were a first-round exit to Oregon State. But, it's, of course, it's going to be super interesting to see how, you know, how he comes in. Of course, it's good to see that we obviously went guard first because we need that depth, of course, because 
a lot of these trade packages, we would have to include probably um, one of our guards, maybe Shade, maybe George Hill, to complement a trade package, especially if we're trying to get a big fish, we'll probably have to throw in a guard. And if we trade away a guard, we don't really have that much guard depth. Um, Tyrese Maxey isn't ready to start. If Ben Simmons isn't ready, isn't tra is traded, then we're gonna definitely need some more oomph at the guard position. If we have a guy that is shooting well behind the arc and defending, I love what I hear from Mr. Springer. Now, with the number 50 overall pick, we selected former Zag, Gonzaga Bulldog, Philippe Petrusev. Now, Philippe Petrusev is a big man, but he's a big man and he scores big points, okay? He averaged 17.5 points and eight rebounds. 17 and a half points and eight rebounds in his sophomore season with Gonzaga. He left for the draft in 2020. Then he returned to Serbia to work on his game, and it definitely amped up his draft stock. He was a great big man in college, but you know the NBA thought he could work on a little bit more of his development and tools to translate to the league, and he did that. Um, he played with the Mega Basketball League last season. He averaged 23 points, 7.6 rebounds, so his scoring went all the way up. He earned ABA MVP honors, and he at, he uh, beefed up his three-point range, okay? So I like what I see, having this new backup center. And, of course, we hear about these big men, and when they go play overseas, it just seems like they come back stronger, hungrier, ready when they come back to the USA. So it's, and it's, it's always good to see somebody play pro or semi-pro before coming to the NBA because then they're built for the league. But it's great that we got this guy because, you know, he's playing Gonzaga. They play a scrappy style of basketball. And two, one, we shored up the guard. Then we went right ahead and shored up the depth um, at center because, of course, we know uh, we had Mike Scott playing the five sometimes. We don't know if we're bringing back um, Dwight Howard. So that our front court is looking really funny in the light. So it's good that we went and addressed that with our number 50 overall pick. Like I said, we didn't go and make any trades. We didn't make any trades or anything last night. And I know some people were like, oh, um, thought we were going to make a splash move. I could have thought we would have made a splash move too last night. We had a lot of splashy moves um last draft but like i said the lakers stole the show last night and <sighs> but with our number 53 overall pick we selected a center out of western kentucky his name is charles bassey charles welcome to the sixers so charles bassey was selected number 53 overall he's a 6 10 center his scouting report says he's a great at, he's a, well, not great, says he's a shot blocking machine, a shot blocking machine. Okay, rim protector, protect that rim. And they said he should also provide value as a lob target and a post scorer. So I like that, what I'm hearing already about Charles Bassey, especially knowing that Dwight Howard is a free agent and not knowing what we're gonna do there. Of course, like I said, we need to get some depth behind Joel Embiid and Charles Bassey is a Nigerian player. He was a five-star recruit coming out of high school and he was the number six overall player in the 2018 class according to 24-7 Sports. He had a leg injury that slowed him down in 2019-2020, but he bounced back in 2020-2021 with averages of 17.6 points and 11.6 rebounds and three, three blocks per game. So he is active at the rim and we love to see it he finished with a player efficient race um, rating of 32.6 which was second best in all college basketball behind the only consensus player of the year luca garza per sports reference and like i said he is going to be coming in ready to be a rim protector so those are our three sixers that we got last night Jaden springer philippe Petrusev. And now we have Charles Bassey. I'm super excited. Like I said, when you're picking late, like we were picking, you're not picking a starter. You're picking depth pieces. We're a team that has to be 
ready to go. When we're when you're picking late in the draft, when you're a team like the Sixers are went now, when you're heading the draft, you know, we're not getting our next we're not getting our superstar as of now. Like I said, they could be superstars next year, next season, or even this season. Who knows? Breakout guy. But that's not what we're um that's not our goal. Our goal is to get some great depth off the bench. And it looks like we're gonna get that. We got some rim protection, we got some three-point shooting off the bench, we got some great defense off the bench, it sounds like, and that's exactly what we need. So let me know how y'all are feeling after the draft and let me know what do y'all think? What do y'all think? What moves do the Sixers need to make and now that the draft is over? Let me know. Make sure you like this video, make sure you leave a comment, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Can't wait to get back in the stew and see you all again. But until I talk to you guys next time, bye!